So with the release of the highly anticipated Oppenheimer, we decided to do a uh, top five Christopher Nolan movies. Welcome to Top 5, a movie podcast. I'm Ralph, here with Caesar as always. How's it going, Caesar? I'm ready, bro. Let's I'm ready this. for a new Nolan film. I feel like Nolan is... is one of those directors is like an event director. Like yeah. he, he releases a movie as an event yeah. that you're like, oh shit, the new Nolan movie is coming. 100%. So I'm excited to do this top five, man. I think, I mean, he only has, he only has a dozen of movies. So we should have a lot of overlap here. I expect I so. if you have brain I cells. Know. I don't know. <laughs> well, well, we'll see. But yeah. yeah, I'm excited, dude. How about you get us started? Yeah. So my, my, um, obviously the criteria here is, Movies director by Christopher Nolan. And the way I chose my movies is, is like this. 40% entertainment value, okay? 30%, this is a big one for me. 30% the filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Nolan's such a master at filmmaking that when I watch his movies, I look for that. You know what I'm saying? I look for like, oh, like what he did here. That's what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, like, for example, when you look at Tenet, how did he do the, the, the going backwards scenes? Like, that's something that, like, he does stuff like that that you're like, oh, how did he do this? 20% um, set pieces. He also has great set pieces and practical set pieces. Not a, not a CGI fan, so I, I look forward to that. And then 10% is actors. He works with great actors. And my list is a lot based on, like, the actors that I like. Yeah. So that's my breakdown. What about you? Mine is actors, film quality, right? And my third is mind fuck. <laughs> How much it just fucks with your head? Okay, that, I love that. That's, about a, that's a spoiler Nolan. to your list. Uh, well, to start us off, my I think we're gonna have pretty similar top three. I hope. No. I hope, but my number five is is the one that I feel is gonna be controversial, but it's the Dark Knight Rises. Ah, All right. Okay. Uh, I think Dark Knight Rises is not very acclaimed, especially following the Dark Knight, which which everybody loves, and then Dark Knight Rises like a step below. So it's like, oh, this movie's not as good. I love The Dark Knight Rises. I know that it has its problems. I just love Tom Hardy. I love Tom Hardy. I, I think they wrapped this, the, the, the trilogy. They wrapped it nicely with like with um, Bruce Wayne and friends with this girl and, and uh, Alfred seeing him. I, I, I think Tom Hardy is what I like the most about this movie. And I think yeah. he, he did so good. The voice is so classic. I remember seeing the, the plane scene at a screening before mm. like an extended scene before the movie came out and I was like blown away. Mm. Great set pieces. I love the dark Knight. Right. Yeah. So actually look, some people hate dark Knight rises, which I is know. interesting to me. It's right. Sad. Um, it's I sad. almost, I almost broke my code here and I almost added two dark Knight movies. To my top five. And dark Knight rises was going to be my number five also until I decided to stick to my guns. Okay. Right. Um, so my number five, and it's going to be mainly because of actors, right? You know, I went on a, on a big spree where Robert Pattinson was the, the actor to watch, right? Mm. Um, so I'm gonna put Tenet as my number five. I know it's not a movie that a lot of people like, but look, I was excited to see John David Washington, right? Finally, you know, come out to the world in a sense, right? Yeah. Robert Pattinson killed it. Yeah. And I think it was just, especially for John David Washington, I think he was just a victim of the time. Right, I think the movie came out at a bad time for him. It did. Um, I no, think, well, not for him, but I mean, yeah, it came out like, first movie after COVID, and it's like. But yeah. I think he was the most affected by it, in my opinion, his career. I could be wrong, but um, I think that movie was gonna have the potential of just blowing him up, Michael B. Jordan style. Um, yeah. I thought he had it in him, but I think the timing was just would have been pre-pandemic. I yeah. love Tenet. It's on my list. Oh, okay. We, we, we could talk about it. I wasn't more expecting more that. Um, my number four. Is the Prestige? I love that movie. Another Prestige is a movie that he made in between <laughs> Batman's. Okay, uh, I love that movie. I love the actors. I still joke with I, like to this day. I still joke with you didn't know like when he you remember that part where like the nod is like what nod did you tie? I don't know. You don't know. I love that movie and and everything when you watch it the second time where everything makes sense like he didn't know about the nod because it wasn't him. I love everything about that movie. It's a bit long. But I love it. I obviously love Christian Bale. I think this is a better Christian Bale than we get in the Batman films. And Hugh Jackman is awesome. Scar Joe is in the movie. I love the actors. This is for me. This is all about the actors, and and also I just 
I love Magic, bro. Yeah. I think it's a great movie. Look, spoiler alert, Prestige is on my list, okay? okay? But it's not next. Mm. And if if you noticed, I was laughing quite a bit while you were explaining Prestige. And that's because I, I was already on my next movie. I couldn't even think of your explanation because <laughs> I know of how upset I'm about to make you. What is And it? I loved it. All right? My number four is Inception. Wow. Number four. Wow. Inception. That's stupid. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. I'm really curious how you're going to get a top three without, without, with only one Batman film, but like, keep going, bro. Not at all. Inception. Look, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. Leo? Because I know you're going to go into Leo? plenty of Number detail. Number four? Leo? <laughs> I know you're going to go into plenty <laughs> of detail. Okay. So I'm going to leave it at that. We'll talk about it when you come around to it. All right. My number three is Tenet. We spoke about it a little bit already. Okay, that's pretty high. It's pretty high. I I love Tenet. Yeah. I think I think it's it's I don't know how to explain this. It's not a top three best Nolan films, all right? But it's top three with my criteria based on like entertainment, based on the actors. It's top three. Like if I had a choice, it's in my top three. I hated the parts that you don't understand what they're saying. There's a lot of flaws with this movie. It's not his best film. I just think it's so creative. It's so creative. It's so entertaining just because of like, if you look at my breakdown, like it matches my breakdown, like the set pieces, the set piece with the plane, the set piece where like they're going backwards at the beginning of the movie. I mean, yeah. at the end of the movie and it's the part from the beginning of the movie, the the whole back backwards sequence. It's amazing. I fucking love that I think that Tenet movie. is a victim of Nolan having to dumb it down for the audience. Like, I don't think he dumbed no, it down. No, he didn't dumb it down at all. That's the problem, right? Oh, I get what you're I saying. I think he, if he would have dumbed it down a little bit, I think everyone would have enjoyed it more. I think it would have done better. I think it just went over Dude, everyone's head. In the last sequence where they're like Team A, Team B, and some yeah. going backwards, some going... It's like, just just off that alone, it's like I'd rather watch yeah. that than like Dark Knight Rises. It or forced Prestige. you to think a lot. Yeah. It forced you to think a Plus, lot. It forced I you love, to focus a lot. I love Pattinson. I thought he yeah. was great in it. You weren't taking any bathroom breaks there. Yeah, I was. Even though it was long as hell. But yeah, it was really yeah. long. Number two. All right. Number three for me. Number three. I'm yeah. sorry. Number three. Number three for me is The Dark Knight. Okay. Wow. The Dark Knight. What yeah. the fuck are we the doing The Dark Knight here? is number three. Inception and Dark Knight. Oh my the God. Dark Knight is number three. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Okay. Heath Ledger killed it. Yeah. It was more of a Joker movie than anything to me. Well, honestly. I, don't, don't explain to me why the movie's good. Tell okay. me why you Wait. have it number three, bro. Uh, huh? Wait. Give me a second. You'll hear when you hear my two and my one. Okay. All right, which are going to be extremely controversial. I love it that yeah, I way. Know. All right, but Dark Knight, I think Dark Knight started what we have now with Marvel and DC. Right. Wow. If it wasn't for the Dark Knight movie and what it brought and the way it made people feel and the way it just changed people's opinion on comic book movies, I don't think we have the Marvel universe. Like I, I honestly think it, it's That's a completely it, different it tone, but I kind yeah, of but I think it shifted everything. It brought that it we brought a, a little respect to exactly to superhero movies. exactly. So now other people started thinking, well, I wonder what we can do if we did this, yeah, right? Yeah. So I think the Dark Knight really broke that barrier. Um, and I mean, sh even if it didn't, for the movie alone, it deserves to be on this top five, maybe even higher, but it's not. Wow. All right. Well, my number two is Inception. Okay. All right. Uh, I love this movie. It's one of my favorite movies. I've seen it a million times. They didn't put it number one because my number one, which mostly everybody could guess what it is. I think it's a better film. Yeah. I think Inception still has like, I'm willing to like forego it, but it has some like, like plot issues. They're yeah. like nonsensical shit, but I just love it. I've seen that movie so many times. I love all the actors. I love the ensemble a lot. Leo, Tom Hardy, Elliot Page, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Michael Caine, bro. What an ensemble. I love it. Plus, the set pieces again, bro. This guy is such a master at set pieces. The spinning room, you know what I'm saying? When the fucking when they show the car and then they show the room, it's so good. Inception is yeah. so good. How can you not have it in your top? Uh, the three? ensemble, the ensemble is what really it's carries crazy. the, the movie music. For me. Yeah. Bah, bro, I remember watching that trailer. Those horns, Hans Zimmer, bomb, and that you know that 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 um soundtrack to Inception changed because all the trailers now use that fucking horn, like bomb. Yeah. Plus, you still quote that movie to this day. Like, would you rather? Would you want to be an old man filled with regret? But bro, what a line! It's a great movie. It's a great movie. I just don't. You know what it was for me? I didn't notice how good Inception was until its second, until my second watch of it. I don't a know lot what of great happened. Movies the first are like one. that, yeah, bro. Yeah, I don't know what happened in my first watch, but as stupid as this is gonna sound, right? I actually remember enjoying Shutter Island with Leo that year more. 
in the first watch, right? It wasn't until the second watch that I realized how much better Inception was in Shutter Island, right? Um, but I don't know that that feeling alone. I think is what keeps it out here for me. Um, That's great. Yeah. What's your number two? My number two is the Prestige. Wow. Yeah, I love the Prestige. Wow. I genuinely love the Prestige. Like I, I thought it was a great movie. Um, I'm a big fan of plot twists. I'm a big fan of good endings, right? I think the hardest thing you can do in a movie is is the ending, um, right? As we can see with a lot of TV shows and movies, um, sometimes a simple ending is the safe way out so you don't ruin it like Game of Thrones, right? But in this sense, uh, they hit it perfectly. And that, that feeling you got at the end, um, I pride myself sometimes in trying to guess what the ending is going to be or even being close to what the ending could be. And they just got me. You know what's good about that is an ending that the clues are there, but even with the clues being there, you wouldn't figure yeah. it out. You know, that's what's genius about prestige. It's amazing. I don't know about putting it top two though. All right, wait till you hear number one. <laughs> well, my, my number one is the Dark Knight. I mean, yeah. it's uh, I think it's pretty much his best. It made movie. Nolan. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It, it put him on the map. I mean, bro, to you just even get that movie, you have to be on the map. But yeah, oh, yeah it, it put him in. A, I agree in a, with you. It put him in a different it like. Put him in the in the echelon that you're talking about yeah, now, yeah. where it's like now we expect this yeah, movie, the Quentin right. Tarantino it. echelon. That's what it did before yeah. that. He was a director. A right, right. One. Now it's like, yeah. oh, I gotta watch the next Nolan film. Exactly. I think, yeah, I think, bro, that movie and it holds up even with the superhero movies that all the, after that. There's been a barrage of superhero movies. It still holds up against those. I think. I mean, Dark Knight. There's not really much to be said. It's the number one. The Joker, obviously, was awesome, bro. People still make that Joker voice to this day. That Joker set the bar. Like, whenever, you know that whenever, like, there's new Jokers, it, it's been um, Jared Leto and, and Joaquin Phoenix. They still go, when you first trying to see, you're still trying to compare it to Heath Ledger and the yeah, laugh. Let 100%. me hear the laugh and let's see. Um, they expanded on the Batman world so much with, with Morgan Freeman. And it was just a better Batman and a better story. Better filmmaking, the set pieces. It yeah. Was, it's, it's perfect. It was. It was. What's your number one? <laughs> oh, my God. Are you ready? Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Are you going to put fucking... How about this? How doing? about I let you guess it? I mean... Oh, you're going to fucking say Interstellar. Inter. Wow, bro. Wow. I heard that gas back there, okay? <laughs> Interstellar. <laughs> First horrible. of all, one of my criteria was acting, right? Matthew McConaughey. Yeah. All that, right, that all right, all no right. Sense, bro. It makes no sense to you because that you movie makes understand. no fucking sense. The show with the books okay. is stupid. You talk about landing the ending, I bro. Loved you talk about landing the ending. Yeah, you're right. What ending you're, was look, that? You're right. But I sat through the whole thing and I loved it. I just I don't know what I loved seeing Matthew McConaughey in that world. It brought it all full circle to me, and I enjoyed the shit out of it. Not to mention, it's been proven to be very accurate. To so what? What is accurate about Space it? Space movies. How do you know that, bro? Neil deGrasse Tyson. No, bro. Stop it. That movie is not Nolan's best. It's not even in his top hey, three, bro. Hate all you want. Interstellar. I mean, I number it. one. I, watch it. I know I'm going to have a lot of fans. No, out there you won't, bro. People Absolutely. are going to flame you for that. Dark Knight, Dark Knight. <laughs> <laughs> that movie is flawed, bro. Just like Christopher Nolan, I like to twist it. No, at the that movie is flawed, bro. The ending right. is not worthy, bro. But you know what? I respect your list other than that. I will say this, though, for honorable mentions, right? Dark Knight Rises was good. I actually think Batman Begins might have been better than the dark knight rises could be could be um yeah i mean honorable mentions for me is just memento yeah memento. i just remember the only thing i don't like about memento is not an easy watch bro so it's like i had to watch it multiple times so you're like you know what i'm saying so like it's a good movie and i respect that he made it like that i don't like to be challenged that much bro and now imagine imagine fucking paying for a movie ticket to watch that bro going out of that's a movie you have to watch on dvd bro you have to like put it right back on because i if i paid 15 bucks to go watch that movie, I would have walked out and be like, what the fuck? I didn't get it any It would have been like 10 bucks back then. But yeah. yeah, I guess. But yeah, I got to put it there just because I respect I agree. the filmmaking. I, it's on my honorable mentions too. And then I also put this here, not as an honorable mention, but just because a lot like Interview with a Vampire, I want to point out how much it sucks, mm-hmm. right? I wasn't a fan of Dunkirk. I personally did not like Dunkirk. I think Dunkirk is a movie that you have to get what they're doing. I it's thought like a, Dunkirk is almost like a concept. I thought album. they tried to impress us. You know when rappers do concept yeah. albums and it's like this is not a real album. It's yeah. like a concept album, and it's just yeah. Nolan trying to fuck with time exactly. type of shit. They tried to Im- they tried to impress us right with all this booha and all this you know nice stuff. You know what I mean? And it's just it didn't hit for me. Yeah. I, I remember being extremely bored during that movie. So I guess Dunkirk Bam. sucks. Oh my god, sucks. 
Um, all right. Well, not that's, as far as filmmaking goes, obviously. Come on, let's go, guys. That's our top five. Let us know your top five. Let us know. You know what? In this one, let us know which top five is better because I know you guys like Nolan. I don't, I don't think people are going to agree with you on that interstellar. But, yeah, let us know what you think, and we'll see you next episode. The smart ones will. Thank you for listening to Top 5. See you next time.